views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. On this edition of Foodie Down Bronx, we're kicking it off with some nutritional foods and not so ordinary grub. So if you like to eat, stay tuned. From Bronx Head to the World, this is Foodie Down Bronx. <music> Welcome once again to Foodie Down Bronx. Make sure you stay connected to us on Instagram at BronxNet TV, at Foodie Down Bronx, and follow me at The Hungry Dominican. On today's show, we'll be debuting our new Healthy Bronx Bite segment with our health and wellness correspondent, Mary Vin Rose, featuring Nada Qureshi of Nourished by Nadia. Then we'll meet food enthusiast and blogger, Brandy Bodega of No Ordinary Grub. But before we do all that, let's do what we do at the top of every show. Let's get into this week's Chew News. According to a Bloomberg report, we might be facing a french fry shortage due to cold and wet weather stunting the growth of potatoes. The potato crop forecast in the U.S. has been the lowest since 2010, according to a U.S. Department of Agriculture report. Potato producers here in the states have turned to foreign producers to help make up for the loss. As a result of this weakened potato harvest, expect to see higher prices for potatoes at your local supermarket. 23 states and more than 100 people have been affected by ongoing E. coli outbreak linked to romaine lettuce grown in the Salinas Valley, California area. Out of the 102 people who fell ill, 58 of them were hospitalized. The Center for Disease Control has advised anyone who sells any type of romaine lettuce from that region of the country to stop immediately. For more information, visit cdc.gov. A controversial, fast, casual Chinese restaurant has closed less than a year after opening. Lucky Lee's, which opened in April, caused some controversy when one of the owners of the establishment marketed their version of Chinese food as more clean and less oily and less salty than anything else available. The restaurateur, who is white, received backlash for her language that fed into racist stereotypes about Chinese food and Chinese-owned restaurants being dirty and unhealthy. Many criticized Ariel Haspel, a nutritionist whose intent was to sell Chinese-American takeouts, such as fried rice and lo mein, from profiting from Chinese culture, while not understanding the context around Chinese-American restaurant menus. White Castle is recalling select boxes of frozen sandwiches because of the possible presence of listeria in its burgers, cheeseburgers, and jalapeno cheeseburgers. The recalled burgers have a best buy date from August 4, 2020, to August 17th, 2020, and are being removed from stores. For more information on this, head on over to FDA.gov. All right, guys, that is this week's Chew News, giving you a little food for thought. Foodie Down Bronx will be right back. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Healthy Bronx Bites with Mary is a new bi-weekly segment with our health and wellness correspondent, Mary Van Rose. Let's see what Mary's got for us today. Hi, M, and Foodie Down Bronx viewers. Welcome to Healthy Bronx Bites with Mary. I'm Mary Van Rose. Today, I'm happy to be joined on set with Nadia Qureshi. 
She is from Nourish by Nadia. Welcome, Nadia. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited for the goodness that you have brought with us today. So before we even get into this delicious food that you have for us, give me a little bit of background about yourself. Sure. So I'm a holistic nutritionist. I've been a nutritionist for about five years now. Um, and as we spoke earlier, I actually used to work in the finance world. Mm. So I wanted to do something that was actually helping people. And that's kind of how I came across becoming a nutritionist. Um, so for the last five years, I've been a nutritionist. I've been doing nutrition consultations. Mm. Um, I launched products last year, and oh, we'll talk about some of those okay. too. Yeah, Good. so I would incorporate some of the spices that we're going to be using today. Um, and, and then I also do cooking classes. Oh, so that's what we're gonna do today. Yes, we're gonna talk more exactly. about the cooking. What I love about this is that these are simple dishes with like, I think you said 10 ingredients and less. Mm -hmm. And that way all our viewers at home can yes. actually go ahead and do it on their own. So let's get started with the first dish that we okay. have here. What is this called? So this is a traditional um, Pakistani comfort food. Mm -hmm. It's called dal. Um, mm -hmm. So my take on it is I add spinach to it. So basically it's, you put all the ingredients, um, you put red lentils, which I have right here. Mm -hmm. um, we put about a teaspoon of coriander powder, a teaspoon of salt. We go a little slower. So oh, what sure. Is this? <laughs> so this is coriander powder. So okay. it's basically um, the coriander seeds, which is cilantro. It's also known as cilantro. What is that good for? Because I've never heard so of that. So it use that is spice. great for. It's, um, I would say all of these are kind of anti-inflammatory. They're good for mm. digestion. So which um, is really this good is, for this time of year, exactly. especially in the East Coast. These are all very warming spices. And, um, and then I also like to use sea salt. So it's about a teaspoon of sea salt. And we would put all of these ingredients into a pot, maybe like a medium-sized pot. Um, and then turmeric as well. So about a teaspoon of turmeric. Uh, mm -hmm. Turmeric, I'm sure you've heard a lot about mm -hmm. lately. It is also very warming. It's um, anti-inflammatory. It is great for, I'll take turmeric if I have like a headache or something. Oh, wow, just so, like turmeric yeah, straight. Yeah, it's great for pain, arthritis, okay. all kinds of things. Um, and then, so this is chili powder. Now I know mm -hmm. that there are different types of chili powders yes. throughout the world. Um, this is actually comes from that part of the world. So in like the, the Pakistan region okay. um, of that part of the world. So it is very spicy. Um, I know, right <laughs> before we started, I snuck a little bit in. I was like, oh, okay, I need a little bit of water. So um, if someone wants to get something a little less spicy, what would you recommend, another type? Um, you could actually just use less. Like okay. I, I like to make it spicy, but you could probably half this. Um, I put two teaspoons. Okay. And, um, and then we have one cup of red lentils. Um, so we put everything into a pot um, along with two and a half cups of water. Um, you let that come to a boil and then you simmer it for about 15 minutes. So what, what would someone normally do? Would they have like a pot, yeah. they boil the water, mm -hmm. and then once the water is like comes to a boil, then you add your seasoning? So you can actually add everything all together. That's the, okay, yeah, wow, so that's so the easy. easy thing about this is that you can add everything, aside from the spinach, and I'll explain that in a second, but you add everything into the pot, um, then just let it cook for 15 minutes. And um, and then at the end, um, so the thing about greens is I so I love to first of all I love to add greens wherever I can, so I like to add spinach to this because spinach when you cook it it actually um, has a higher iron um, content. Really, and then when it's raw. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Even it's great raw too, but when you cook it, it actually has higher iron. So I like to add that in um, into this at the end. Um, the longer that you cook greens or spinach it actually loses some of the nutrient content. Mm -hmm. So I always like to add it just until it's wilted. Um, so as you can see here, so I don't know if I can, if, we, if yes, anyone yes, can I see can this. See look, yeah. look how good that looks. But um, so this is, this is all of the ingredients. Um, so it's so simple. It takes about five minutes to really put mm -hmm. together and then 15 minutes, about 15 to 18 minutes to cook. And then what do you normally pair this with? I see we have a nice bowl yes. of something else here. So normally, um, traditionally um, in Pakistan, people will either usually eat this with like pita bread okay. or on rice. Mm -hmm. um, but I figure, so rice, a lot of times rice is very heavy, um, you mm -hmm. end up feeling tired. And I'm not going to lie, I love me some white rice, <laughs> yeah. but I try to do it in moderation. So this is a nice alternative. So this is a cauliflower rice, and, um, and I'll show you um, how to make this as well. So this is ri pre-rice cauliflower rice. Okay. So these days, I feel like cauliflower rice is so popular that mm -hmm. they've actually started selling this um, pre-rice, which basically means it's 
it looks like rice. They, mm -hmm. they chop it up um, or put it in a food processor and, or a blender and um, and then it's... Chop it up. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually very easily available to any supermarket these days. If you look in their, gro in their produce section, they'll mm -hmm. usually have um, cauliflower rice. So you can also take a full cauliflower, chop off the stem, add it to a blender or a food processor, and then um, just you know, just process it until it looks like rice. Okay. So that's the other alternative too. Um, so the way that we're gonna cook cauliflower rice, what, how we would normally make it, is we would add um, about a half teaspoon of salt. Okay. Um, Does it matter the salt? Do you have so a I use, I like sea salt, okay. personally. Is there um, a reason for that? It just, um, I don't like the, I don't personally like the iodine salt. They're very processed and mm -hmm. I like the pure, I like to try to get pure salt. Because um, it's pure, you the, can use a little less. Exactly, yeah. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. So I know my, my family, they yeah. either have diabetes or high blood pressure. Yeah. So when I when they hear I'm using a little bit of salt on something, yeah. they always freak out. What is like the myth around salt? Is salt bad for you? Is it good for you? So for those who do have like heart disease or um, diabetes, they should definitely limit their salt intake. Okay. Um, a lot of people are totally salt free mm -hmm. and then they just, um, I, I, they just end up using a lot of different spices to make it still flavorful. Um, but yeah, it is it is kind of true. Um, I still use salt, like, mm -hmm. but I don't use a lot of salt. Like, I'll right. try to I'll try to limit the amount of salt just enough, just so the food tastes it's good. good right. Yeah. And I think when you're using a, like a sea salt, like you said, instead of iodines, you don't actually have to use as much, right? Right. Because it's more of a pure, exactly. concentrated form. Right. So yeah. how do we go about making this? So okay, so the first thing we would do actually, so we have a half an onion right here. Um, I would just chop that up into mm -hmm. like maybe kind of like diced. Mm -hmm. Add that to a, a wok or like mm -hmm. a large skillet and um, let that cook until it's like softened, mm -hmm. about five minutes. And then you add about um, one clove of garlic minced, a teaspoon of ginger, for mm. cook that down for like a minute. Um, and then you add all the spices and the cauliflower and that's it. <laughs> that's, that sounds so easy so, but yeah. so delicious. It's so flavorful, yeah. so impactful. So if someone wants to put this together, how would we do it? Would we like grab the cauliflower so, first? Yeah, so we would take the cauliflower first. So we would basically take the cauliflower rice here. And I did add some cilantro as well to that. Yeah, I'll just move this over. Yeah, here. and the great thing about cauliflower as well is that it's high in vitamin C. Um, and vitamin C is, is really great mm. um, for iron absorption. So like I mentioned earlier about iron, lentils are high in iron, um, the spinach is high in iron, and, um, and then the cauliflower paired with that mm -hmm. helps the iron absorb better because of the vitamin C. So, so overall, it's just a it, it's just a great food combination. So this is something that's so good for lunch or even like yeah. at dinner when you come home. Yeah. It's easy to make something mm -hmm. that you can like probably meal prep, which I'm all about. Exactly. One thing I also love is like a good smoothie in the morning. Yes. So, what do you recommend if someone like me who just wants to get in and out sure. but wants to be healthy during the winter time? So this is actually yeah. sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. So what we have here, this is also a traditional uh, Pakistani di uh, Pakistani smoothie. It's called the mm. mango lassi. Mango it's, lassi. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. It's very simple. Um, I have mango, frozen mango chunks here. Um, and you can get that in any so supermarket. So how much do we have to put in? So we're going to add about a cup in here. So we don't have a measuring cup as yes. of right now, but we're going to eyeball this. Yeah. Right, because so. it also depends on, it also depends on um, what your preference is. If some people like it thicker, like just like any milkshake. Um, yeah, I think that's good, right? That maybe a little, little more. Color. Yeah. Um, and then I also have so traditionally, um, it's used. We use cow's milk, but uh -huh. I'm actually going to use almond milk. Um, and this is the silk almond milk. And when you're buying different types of, you know, I guess really anything. Just make sure it's unsweetened. So I bought the unsweetened almond milk. And we are just going to add about, we'll add about a half cup to this. And then we'll see, you know, we'll see if that's the consistency that we like. And what's the next ingredient? So the next ingredient is the almond milk. Okay. Um, so we're gonna add again about, like around a half cup of almond milk. 
And then what is this little baby? So that is maple syrup. So usually, I got excited. <laughs> sugar. I'm a sugar person. I'm not going to lie. Usually people add sugar to it, mm -hmm. but I figured mm -hmm. almond milk is, I mean, I'm sorry, maple syrup is a little bit healthier. Um, okay. It is still a sweetener, but I figured it's a little healthier, so we'll add a little bit of maple syrup, maybe like a couple teaspoons. That's good. I probably did more than a <laughs> teaspoon, but you know. And that's it. And then you just blend this and... And then that's your, so your shake. To, so. Can you tell I don't have one of these at home? <laughs> there you go. And that's it. That's so good. Thank mm -hmm. you. And what's so good about this? Like, what vitamins does this have? I know, obviously, the vitamin yeah. C from the mango, but. So the vitamin C is really great. Um, the almond milk, so that's also fiber. Um, and, and then the, the coconut milk, I mean, sorry, the almond milk is, is great too as well. Um, it has probiotics in it. They've actually added probiotics to it. Mm -hmm. So overall, like this whole meal is great for digestion. It is um, great for, it, because of the high fiber content, it's good for diabetes, high blood pressure, all of those great things. So and Can we get a things. shot of us yeah. like just tasting this? <laughs> because I know you know what it tastes like, and I kind of know what it tastes like, so I cheat it, but I still want just a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. And what I'm really glad about this smoothie as well, because mm -hmm. it doesn't have banana in it. I'm actually yeah. following a few people in New York City Who that's allergic to the banana. Oh, you're allergic. Yeah, so this is really good. Yeah. I just want to say thank you again so you're much welcome. for joining us here on set. I want to say thank you to our viewers at home for watching. Um, but you want to stay around, stay healthy and connected with Nadia on Instagram with Nourished by Nadia. And you can visit nourishedbynadia.com to find out more information. Don't go anywhere. Footy Down Bronx will be right back. Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I am, of course, your host, <laughs> M. The Hungry Dominican. And my guest today is a self-proclaimed food aficionado. And her Instagram, <laughs> at Brandy What's Good, shows you exactly how much of one she is. Welcome to the show, Brandy Bodega. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for appearing on the show. First question, most important question, is that your actual last name? Please say yes. No. Okay. Right. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so funny because everybody calls me Brandy Bodega, they yeah. think it is my last name. I, I probably should legally change it because I like it, actually. That's awesome. But <laughs> that sounds great. No, my um, now fiancé and I, we just got engaged, but about seven years ago. Congratulations Thank on that. You. How long have you guys been together? Uh, about eight years. Even eight? Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. So Congrats. about seven years ago, thank you, um, we started a music blog called The Dirty Bodega because okay. that's his... Um, gaming name dirty bodega on, okay. Okay. <laughs> on xbox and so we were trying to I can think see of, the history of yeah, this he's name a now. new yorker he's a true new yorker mm. he was born in the bronx um raised in rockland county but he um went by dirty bodega and so we were trying to think of a name for a hip-hop blog when mm. we first dated because we bonded over music and food right. and um so we were like why don't we just use your um your xbox um, name and we we're like okay and so we just ran with it so everybody calls us the bodegas Very nice. that's our last name to everybody so wow. we just ran with it and 
Yeah. So you guys had that, like, <laughs> the, the marketing, the naming, everything has already been on point. Yeah, the before you really knew it. Yeah, before we even knew it, so. And so, so you took the, uh, the uh, I guess, the avatar of Brandy Bodega, and you made something with it, right? Yeah. You, you have your No Ordinary Grub website. Yes. Um, which I love. Now, can I ask how you came up with that name? I think I know how you came up with it, but I might be wrong. Yeah, so I was um, just trying to figure out names, and I was just, like, frustrated and my fiance, he plays a lot. He's fun, he's fun mm. just like me, but I was not in a playing mood. Right. I was concentrating, I was focused. And I was like, I need help with the name, quit playing around. And he um, started singing, um, This Is No Ordinary Girl, by, by Sade, okay. in the tune of Sade, that's No pretty Ordinary much what Love, I figured. Yeah, acting sure. goofy. And I was like, oh, that's it. And he was like, I think so. And then that's how that came. So my um, Instagram name first was No Ordinary Grub, mm -hmm. but I wanted to personalize it, so I changed it to Brandy What's Good, Very and nice. I kept the No Ordinary Grub website. That's um, sort of like your tagline. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And so um, how long have you had your Instagram account for? Um, I would say about two and a half years now. Two and a half years. Yeah. Okay. Maybe three. I've lost count, but I, around that time. Two and a half. Because it looks, it looks like it's, it, it looks, it's a great looking account, Thank but it looks you. like it's been around for a long, long time. No, it's just, um, well, what I do have, I've been doing this for a long time. I just didn't utilize Instagram with it. So yeah, yeah. but about two and a half, three years. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so have you always, uh, you've always had a love of food oh, yes. or did it sort of <laughs> percolate even more with like Instagram? Yeah. being this tool where you could take your love of almost anything and just sort of go with it. Yeah, definitely. So before Instagram, when it was just Facebook, I used to um, I used to cook more mm -hmm. when I had more time. <laughs> I used to cook more and I used to put recipes on Facebook for my family and my friends. Okay. Um, then people started inboxing me, asking me, hey, can I get that recipe? Or where'd you find that place? Or I'll go somewhere to eat with Rich, my fiance, mm -hmm. and post it. And people are like, oh my God, I'm telling them what they must have. And people would tell me, oh, I tried the, you know, quesadillas you said were amazing or whatever and I was like okay and my mom told me you should do something something with this so I was like yeah whatever and then uh, Instagram became popular and I kind of transitioned that energy to Instagram right. um, on my personal Instagram account Brandy Bodega mm -hmm. and um, then I was thought about it and I was like you know what I should kind of separate this from my personal life and actually go hard with it and just start posting like the hip places in New York City, even when I travel, when I went to Japan or Montreal, things mm -hmm. like that, so people can just know what's out there. So what's, uh, is that one of the reasons you, you share your love of food? Because I, 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 I often question people, I'm like, what, what are we doing here? Right, we're what's putting the purpose? A, what's the purpose of this? We're putting <laughs> up a picture of food that we're eating and, and we're saying, you know, we've enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, but you just mentioned that, that thing, what happens is that people reach out to you. Yeah. And they're like, hey, I've had this because of you. Right. And so you start to see your influence. Yeah, right? it makes me feel good because I'm the type of person, if you come to my house for a holiday or for a gathering, I want to put on a feast for everybody. I want to, sure. I, I sit and watch people eat my food and watch sure. them have a good time. I like to see people have a good experience. And mm. so, people are now paying for experiences more than things lately. So, you're, you know, and so I just like That's to share true. those experiences with people and just show them like, you know, people are from New York and don't even know half of the things are here. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And I'm a transplant, you know? So, right, because you're, you're originally from Michigan. I am, I'm from Kalamazoo, right. Michigan. Kalamazoo, <laughs> Michigan. And you've been yeah. here for 13 years. About 13 years, yeah. So you're already a New Yorker, technically. You've I been, have paid my dues. Right? You're yes, a New Yorker. I am a New Yorker. Um, <laughs> so tell me about the, the experiences. Going back to the experiences, you're right. People are paying for those things. Mm -hmm. And you do have a little bit of love or a background for food styling. Yes. So presentation, of course, means everything. Yes, you, for right? sure. Mm -hmm. Would you just, I mean, how about if just somebody like Slapdash puts something together for you real quick and it just doesn't look appetizing? Are you automatically turned off or do you at least give it a chance? I give it a chance, but I, and I try not to clutch my pearls too much, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I do give it a chance because sometimes like if you go to those hole in the walls that just slap it on the plate, those are some good places. Those are some of the best I, in New I York. turn a blind eye and eat the food because okay, it's really good. Enough. So I'm okay. not that snooty when it comes to presentation, okay. but so I really, enough. I'm snooty enough okay, where enough. I care. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, tell me some of the differences between food you would have found back home, or mm -hmm. I should say Michigan, because mm -hmm. you are New York, or your home, yes. uh, versus foods that you not only find in New York, but mm -hmm. specifically in the Bronx. Yeah, well, back home, Mich Michigan um, is a mixture. Like, there's a lot of people um, from southern areas that migrated to mm -hmm. the Midwest. So you'll find a lot of things that you'll find in the south. Like, 
It's so funny. People used to laugh because we have a thing where we eat catfish and spaghetti mm. together. Mm. That's like a thing mm. where we're from. We're chili I've never people. Had that yeah, and so if, if you're from Michigan, you've heard most likely heard of catfish with spaghetti. Okay. So it's spaghetti and catfish. Okay. People have like catfish fries and like like a fry cookout and mm. have spaghetti as a side dish. That's a thing. Um, from Michigan, we have places called Coney Islands near Detroit, and Coney Islands here is a place like in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. but Coney Islands in the Detroit area, which I'm not from, but I had family, so I visited there. Um, they're hot dog um, shops, and they're called Coney Islands, I and see, you go okay. and get hot dogs with the works, with onion, with the chili, the mustard, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, de delis are big in Michigan, just like they are in New York. Um, Can I walk around and find like a bodega? No. No. There are okay. no, bodegas no bodegas in Michigan. They are there are corner stores. Okay. 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 So corner stores or so different enough wording. Different wording, same of, thing. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them we don't we don't say bodega. We'll say um, the name of the store. Okay. So like one by my house when I grew up was called the Polar Bear. So okay. people say we're going to the Polar Bear or we're going to Lessman's or we're going to the Whatnot Box. Okay. You know, so you'll I just see. say the name of the store. That's interesting. We that's not how we do yeah. it. Yeah, you're not saying the bo the bodega. <laughs> yeah. Or you'll say the corner store if you want to say it for short. I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm missing because I've been away for so long. Um, but I mean, if I had one of my friends who still lived there, they'd be like, you forget this, you forgot that, but. <laughs> Um, overall, we have a lot of good food, um, a lot of comfort food. Mm. Um, food is a lot cheaper. Right. Restaurants. Right. When right. I go home for vacate for um, for holidays, I'm like, yes, a round of beers or a round of drinks. Sure. Oh my God, compared to here. Yeah, I usually find that anytime you step out of state, it's oh, you're good. It's amazing. You can get I feel rich. A good amount of food for <laughs> <like>. yeah, <laughs> exactly. I've arrived. <laughs> um, before we wrap up, I want to ask you uh, just a couple more things. So. Is there anything in the Bronx, any particular place in the Bronx or where you live around specifically that stands out as a place that people have to go to? Yes, okay, so I actually, I have a segment called um, Best I Ever Had. Mm -hmm. It's a video food That's on segment. YouTube, correct? Yes, it's okay. on YouTube, um, Best I Ever Had, um, like the Drake song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, I, I go off of songs, I guess. Um, I think it works perfectly yeah, for both. Yeah, I, went, I went to, uh, I love this place called Casa. It's okay. on Tremont, I believe, Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. Okay. The owner, Sam, he's amazing. I don't like flan, mm. but I like their flan. Interesting. Okay. I cannot stand flan. Really? Yes. Is it just like the texture? The uh, just, Yes, okay. all of that. And his is magnificent. Right. You have to try it if you like the dessert. And also, um, I also like Mott Haven Bar and Grill mm -hmm. um, in my haven. Okay. And the owner, Rosa. Right. I love her, and I love the food there. It's amazing. They have, like, these ultimate, like, mimosas on the weekend for their brunch the glass is like this huge <laughs> and like it's so you're good yeah you're good okay. and the food is amazing um so those are the two places that i've so been casa to and mott haven bar and grill yes okay awesome and i would definitely we, recommend those two we wrap up i do want to remind people to go to no ordinary grub that's your website that's, that's your website. blog and uh that's where you talk about well actually on your youtube series you talked about casa i have right yeah okay and, yeah. and you, are, you, are you uploading those videos Yes. Somewhat um, regularly? Yes. Well, or? we have seasons, so we're going to start Got the um, third season soon. Very um cool. Yeah, right after the holidays. Awesome. And so, yeah, I've been doing the video series for almost two years now, so nice. it's exciting. So you're in this world. Yeah, and then awesome. you can always check me on my Instagram at Brandy What's Good. Brandy What's Good? Yeah. Thank you, Brandy. Thank All right, you. guys, stay connected with Brandy on Instagram at Brandy What's Good and visit her website at NoOrdinaryGrub.com. You can also check out her series, Best I Ever Had on YouTube, which yes. we just talked about. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all for the show. Thank you again for tuning in, and thank you to our guests today for joining us. Tune in every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. here on BronxNet Optimum 67 and Fios 33. Also, tune in on the go at BronxNet.org and find us on YouTube. From Bronx to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican, reminding you to feed your mind, feed your body. And you see me coming along, <laughs> feed me and give me some drinks. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>